Throughout the 1970s, 1980s, I did a lot of diving. I was actually two years as a commercial scallop diver. And so um, I kind of got to know what the seabed should look like. And what we saw through the 1980s was a change in legislation that allowed bottom-toed gear in fishing boats to be close to the shore. The boats had two or three good seasons and then that was it. It just completely died to death. Like overnight, the herring boats were all gone. There's no herring fishing in the Clyde anymore. What we would see after uh, bottom-toed fishing gear would go across would be very few species left. You'd be on sand and gravels. And so um, with a friend of mine called Don McNeish, myself and Don said, well, you know, the decline in, in generally the marine environment, fish stocks, we have to start looking after and protecting our seas. So the university's involvement uh, and commitment to the project here on Arran really started back in 2003 when we first met Howard and Don. And myself and my colleagues provided them with scientific advice and that was really crucial actually with helping them with their campaign which eventually was successful in 2008 to have the no-take zone designated here. So we've sort of come up to compare uh, no-take zone areas where no fishing is happening compared to areas um, outside the no-take zone. We've got this increasing demand from the human race for more and more seafood as the population grows and so what we're talking about here is trying to find a balance between protection and also supplying seafood. It's a, it's a global topic. We're showing a method here that if done properly, if it's well protected in the right places, that can actually boost your overall production. In this way you have a win-win scenario. You have conservation benefits and fisheries and other economic benefits at the same time. The marine protected area has been one of the best things that's happened here. It's kept all the dredgers out. It's proven it's, itself over the years that the stocks have come right back and really healthy stocks, breeding stock. The size of the scallops have shocked a lot of us how large some of them have got. When they're given that opportunity to sort of recover under 100% protection from fishing or dredging or anything like that, um, it's amazing what can happen. There's been really good recovery in the no-take zone increase in biodiversity of at least 50%. So the scallops have gotten bigger and older and they're more reproductively active. There's about three or four times more lobsters in the no-take zone than there would be out in an area that's fished. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic to be able to dive in the no-take zone and see so much more life. We've had some fantastic shoals of juvenile cod and I just love getting down there, setting the camera up and having loads and loads of little fish all swimming around a bit. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. Hope for the future. We've shown that ecosystems do have an amazing ability to recover if they are properly protected. We've published nine or ten scientific papers on this and that's being read by people all over the world and they're trying to replicate the work that we're doing. Um, so, you know, it, it really, from a small beginning, it's really grown into something much, much larger.